It's mid-February, it's a breezy one today. There's still snow on the ground in a few places. See, it's just lingering a bit. It's windy, so I'm not sure how much of that the microphone's gonna pick up, but anyway. I'm in the walk from the car park behind me up to the pods at the top of the field. And there's a little strip of what will be woodland. Now, we need a shelter belt here because it's quite exposed, it's quite breezy, and we want to have a relatively sheltered bit for customers to be able to walk up to the pods without being buffeted by sideways winds if they're here in winter. But this bit of shelter belt itself is also extremely functional. It gives us a huge number of yields and we're just starting that now. We've only been here three years and we're already starting to extract some fairly significant cash income from just this little strip of shelter belt. So I thought I'd show this video today and uh, show you what we get from it. So the double row of trees are on the very outside of the shelter belt. They are Italian alder, they are nitrogen fixing species. So the first thing, as well as shelter, which is a huge benefit, of course, and that's the most important thing, it also gives us a massive amount of fertility. You know, these are only a few years old and they're really flying up. But above and beyond the outer skin, there's a little row of stuff on the inside and there's a huge amount of diversity in there. So I'll not list them all, there's just too much to go into. It'd be like a 10 minute video just on this. And you know, that's not the point. So we've got another skin on the inside of Red Willow. Now it gives us cuttings, it gives us biomass uh, that we can sell as cuttings for the most money. Uh, we could root them out and sell them as actual trees. Inside that we've got red currant, we've got black currant, we've got gooseberry. Those again we can sell as cuttings, we can sell as actual bushes and we can, of course we get a, a yield of fruit from them as well. We've got hazel trees, so we've got poles from that as well as hazelnuts of course. Uh, there's chestnut going in this year as an overstory and also a full height crab. Sorry, a full height apple tree, you know, big one on its own roots. At least one of them. We've got two or three Morello cherries, so we get a nice sour cherry from it. They do very well here. Uh, they're doing really well on site. Um, all sorts of stuff. We've got uh, sea buckthorn, so we'll have fruit off that eventually once they're big enough. Um, we've got uh, Eliagnus ebbingi, which is another nitrogen fixer, but that gives us fruit. There's loads of stuff. Um, but we've also got underneath that, I mean, there's also things like we've got um, pollen from the crab apple and some of the, uh, the more feral plum types that we've got growing through. Um, wow, that's windy. Um, so those are really good universal pollinators for the more higher yielding cultivars that we'll have on the inside of the system, you know, where they're a bit more tender and they get a bit more protection from this. There's also things like, um, uh, nectar so at the point that we switch to having bees as well you know there should be plenty of that throughout the year there's also cut flowers in the form of daffodils on the ground uh, it's a bit early for them yet but the one thing we do have that actually started to do very well hang on i'll show you so here down at ground level they are just starting to come through that snowdrop bulbs and we spread them far and wide through the whole of the woodland and in other places as well. You can see just how many of them are perhaps. So look, this, this whole area is covered with them starting to come through as a real understory. When you're looking at things like niche and edge in permaculture designs, it's easy to focus on it relative to the rest of the site. But of course here being as far north as we are, I mean, literally about eight, 10 miles that way is the northernmost tip of Scotland. You know, we're north. Um, but being as far north as we are, the croft itself is pretty much on the edge, you know, it is in that niche and we really exploit that when it comes to the uh, snowdrop sales because really the snowdrop sales season has been and gone for the mainstream bulb um, sellers way further south from us. Um, at this point you'd be buying them after flowering so, you know, you can plant them, they do still, you know, they're still viable, they will still grow but you're not going to get flowers off them that year. Whereas here, they're just starting to pop out of the ground, as you saw. So, um, where everyone else stops selling them, that's when we start. And because there's hardly anyone selling them, and no one's selling them in any sort of quantity, um, that gives us a very strong niche, because we're selling them at a premium, because you know, we're the only ones doing so. 
So it's a really good example of using permaculture design in terms of a niche in time and a niche in space to make our product. Um, I mean, we could be selling them earlier in the season, same as everyone else, but we don't. We wait, we hang on until such time of the year that we can sell them at that premium and get maximum from it. Over time, that should apply to a lot of the yields that we're getting. Um, and that's just, you know, one little strip of what will be uh, shelter bells eventually. Um, you know, I've counted about 14, 15 yields in there in total, you know, and they're all very low work. They're all pretty straightforward. They're all very passive. Um, I mean, snowdrops, once they get densely packed enough, they actually pop themselves out of the ground. You know, you, you harvest them just by literally scraping the top mulch off and there they are. Um, very straightforward, very easy. So, yeah, it's similar to um, Sepp Holzer on his site, well, his previous site, the Kromatahof, uh, you know, giant in permaculture design, you know, huge name. But there's 400 meters of elevation gain across um, the, the entirety of his site, you know, in terms of, you know, from where it starts down in the valley and goes up onto the mountainside, 400 meters is huge. So he's able to start low down and start harvesting there and work his way up the mountainside as the season progresses. Whereas us here, we can skip all of that and just go for the niche um, late or early crop that no one else can do um, just because of the conditions here.